and it was awesome. Hello, my name is Luke the Kook, and you're watching WASD-FM, something you can just listen to if you don't want to watch. I'm back with this format of video that I'll be doing once in a while. I only want to make videos like this when I feel like there's something I really want to talk about. You probably don't know this, but I've been a Bushido Blade fan since it was new. I used to play the original game at a friend's house back in 97, until I got my own PlayStation 1 Christmas of 1997, and Bushido Blade was my first ever game. It turned out to be a rather satisfying investment over 20 years later, as I still have the same copy, and I play it from time to time. But in recent years, I've been thinking, I sure would like an updated version of this game, or at least something similar. October, I stumbled upon some videos by a channel called Full Through and another channel called Kubold on YouTube and just a few days ago I finally got around to playing the demo. Kubold are also the developers of Hellish Court. The demo was available under a limited time initially of which I missed out on due to an overwhelmingly busy schedule but when I finally got around to playing it I thought it was pretty amazing. Bushido Blade was a realistic 1v1 sword fighting game that allowed you three different postures and a specialized set of combo attacks depending on what warrior and what weapon you chose. Before Power Stone, it was also a free roam arena, allowing you to run your character around the stage, and if the rollout rate is on, then you can even bounce off of the walls. Why wouldn't you want to do that? I feel bad for bringing up those points because it's going to sound like Hellish Court is lacking. That's because the similarity between Hellish Court and Bushido Blade only goes as far as the fact that they're both 1v1 sword fighting games. Get to know the button layout before you start the game. I'm telling you that because I didn't upon my first attempt and I made an ass of myself and got slaughtered. In fairness, even after I got to know the button mapping, I still make an ass of myself. But I'm having a lot more fun doing it. The developers make sure you get an idea of the button mapping prior to starting a game because whether you look through the options menu or not, they post the control layout right on the main menu screen. The demo allows you to play three out of the five warriors and they are pretty awesome. My favorite one is Gideon. What I do like that Hellish Court has, as of this version, is when you play against the AI, you don't necessarily choose your easy, normal, hard difficulty, but adjust your AI's personality traits. You can make them be a passive fighter, a fighter that's more focused on maneuverability, or a straight up aggressive fighter. You would think that a more aggressive fighter would be the hardest one, but I've had a tougher time with the maneuverable AI. The graphics are pretty, and you're allowed to choose between two stages in the demo, an empty arena where you'll have less frame rate issues on a lower spec PC, <laughs> like me, or the gorgeous outdoors of the manor house. I try to minimize my distractions as much as possible when I'm learning, so I like to stick with the empty arena. It also helps for the fact that my PC is currently in no state to handle both gameplay Play and recording simultaneously. So that's why I record in the empty arena. I'll make 2021 the year that I finally upgrade my PC. <clears throat> Anyway, there's more strategy to Hellish Court than there is in Bushido Blade, where this game is entirely focused on slaughtering your opponent and not running all over a map. Hit the escape button to study your options for combo strikes and begin to implement them on your AI opponent. Damn. That is some awesome music! My copy of Witcher 3 is getting jealous! Forget how good the textures in this game are too, and take a moment to appreciate just how realistically fluid the characters move. Their facial expressions change. Their body postures and body language adjusts according to the situation too. It's an all around impressive looking and feeling game. You're even able to reach for your opponent's wrist to slice him up close, and at a given distance, you can even punch your opponent in the jaw, slice his hand off, you can even kick your opponent, and you can also chop your opponent's head off as well. The demo isn't without its tutorials if you want to get a better understanding of how to be more strategic in the game. It takes more practice to improve your fencing ability and to break out of the random swinging of your sword, but you are capable of blocking your opponent's attacks in different ways. The game encourages you to learn how to parry and repost, and even counter repost. Keep practicing and you'll eventually form better habits. When playing against the AI, however, 
it's easy to just maneuver around your opponent until you're behind him and strike him from behind. Most of your success will come from that tactic if you're only looking to rack up as many wins as possible. If you want to have fun while winning, then you'll learn how to block your opponent effectively while working your way past his comfort zone. Get comfortable with backing up in order to effectively parry. Don't just back up and press an attack button. You have to learn how to use both commands simultaneously and then forward with an attack at the same time to repost after parrying. It's awkward if you're the keyboard mouse type of gamer, but it's a fighting game so you're meant to plug in a gamepad. Just use your PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5, or Xbox, whatever controller. I hardly ever use long guard, and if I do, it's usually not intentional as I'm working my way to feel my opponent's strategy. So get in there, get good, and don't swing your sword around rapidly like some drunken maniac. Feel free to take the game online and see how other players maneuver and fight. It's a good way to test your abilities. In the full release of the game, there will be more hurt and limping animations. The demo even features a couple of wounded animations. If you take a shallow slice to the midsection, your character will keep going, but he won't feel as motivated as he was in the beginning of the fight. You can wound your opponent's arm, and he won't be using that for the remainder of the round. Similar to Bushido Blade, but in the more realistic way that I was looking for from a more recent game. I'm really looking forward to seeing what Kobold has to offer in the full release of this game, and it has a release date set of February 2021, as of me recording this video in late December. I'm used to games being delayed, so if they have to push the release date back a little bit more to make some improvements, then, you know, I'll be more than understanding. Not like it'll be the first game to ever have a delay. Right, Cyberpunk 2077, Final Fantasy VII Remake, Doom Eternal, and Nirvana? <laughs> Kubold, your game is pretty impressive. Thank you for returning the demo to Steam. My name is Luke the Kook, and this has been WASD-FM. Thank you for watching.